Uh, my name is Sunny Ernst. I'm an artist. Um, more specifically, I'm a music and visual artist and curator based in Berlin. My journey to photophobia started when I was in a very frustrated relationship with a white European person and parallel to that I was being introduced to anti-colonial studies and theories and um, it was also when I was starting to to like try to insert myself in the artistic scene of Berlin and also encountering a lot of closed doors. When I came up with the concept photophobia it was when I was realizing how everything related to whiteness li like and there are so many layers to it um, were dangerous to me and should not be made harmless you know it should not be fahamlost because everything that's also related to whiteness is considered harmless like culturally speaking and most specific like I have a, a background in linguistics so I was also particularly interested in the etymologic uh, like et etymology of whiteness like how all European languages um, use adjectives words like white and, and light and bright clear to to good things like things that are understandable things that are good things that are harmless things that are desirable um, and everything that is when they use the adjectives dark and black everything is like illegal or negative violent profane da -da -da. like it and it's also very closely related to christianity and to colonization in the sense and most specifically to the scientific method like implemented through during enlightenment like the illuminism time in the 17th century in europe <clears throat> so I focused on that because I, as an artist and a, as a perfectionist and as a migrant, um, I went through the academia, you know, like I went through uh, every basic education that you get is an Eurocentered education, even in colonized, con like even outside of Europe, because we have been colonized by Europe. Um, and including the music, including music history, like everything we learn are in fact european values and knowledge and and history so uh in as a result uh we as colonized bodies in colonized countries are also taught to undervalue what is local also related to knowledge like you know um invisible not like spirituality is completely taken off the table um, when you talk about knowledge, um, oral knowledge, like oral language is also taken off the table because it's not academic, like it can, it's not written, it's not printed, so it doesn't have the same value. Um, and also the music, you know, like rhythms that are local that you also learn not by going to a school, you know, and then writing it on a, on a note sheet, but you learn by playing it, like it's also part of your DNA somehow. All of these knowledges, just to mention a few, are entirely disconsidered. Art for me is most of all about feelings. Um, and photophobia has a very theoretical <laughs> uh, background um, and also very academic in a way, uh, even though I criticize it. So I really, I don't know. I have. To be honest, I don't know what I want the public to take with them. Like, I don't know what is more important for them to be touched by. I think there are so many aspects, like, along the the, the academic critique that I'm doing with it, you know, and the, the references that I'm bringing with the mangrove uh, from Hesifi that has, like, several generations that has have studied it, um, and that I was introduced to Firstly, by reading Josué de Castro, who wrote of crabs and men in, 19, in the 1970s. And also by the movement Mangi Biti, that was uh, a music, like art and music movement, also from Recife, my hometown, from the 1990s. That was the first music movement in Brazil to mix 
electronic instruments with Afro-Brazilian rhythms and that's why like it's one of my biggest inspirations musically that's already like an entire world for people to uh get into once you know like once they have they see it like they they experience like the mangrove in so many forms and they hopefully go read a little bit about it i would be very glad if people got in touch with the the cultures and the the social and environmental impact of the mangroves um but also when i for me what makes me get up in the morning is the passion that i have for the arts like for me when i do art it's about expression so i couldn't do a project that is entirely dedicated to something scientific or theoretical or academic um but yeah i'm hoping that also the public consists of different groups of people right like i of course i want to educate the white audience but i want the queer poc audience or the queer audience of global majority to feel understood and somehow caressed because like this is what i take away from art that and especially music that touches me you know like when i when i see a performer vulnerable enough to deliver what really troubles them and what really fascinates them that's when i feel like alive and seen and uh, i really gave my time and i worked on myself for several years to be able to reach the vulnerability required to express all the realms that touch photophobia so the choice of media for the immersive exhibition of photophobia um, come from a very natural desire um, that I've always had for fantasy and technology like I've always been I remember when I was three I could already like operate a sound system from my grandparents like nothing impressive but I I am used to like having visions and wanting to have them made possible um, so I feel like I've always loved good music videos, you know, like I've always been, I mean, it's a bit of, it's a bit shitty when you love the music and then you hate the music video. Um, so I hope that doesn't happen with photophobia. Um, but I don't know, like since I got put my eyes on 3D modeling and, you know, like digital design uh, or digital visual art, it has always spoken to me in the way that it, it, it is more possible to create fantasy in a more realistic way. Like it's the most realistic we can we can have nowadays to create like uh, something that doesn't exist. Um, and, you know, as a trans person growing up in a not like in not in a safe environment for being trans um fantasy was a big part of my day you know like um so i would run to television at first and then video games and then i discovered mtv and and then i started having music lessons at school so the arts give me like this 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 joy to live you know like it's more it's more it's better <laughs> to live like in the fantasy world than in the actual world many times for me at least so um i was a bit addicted to video games when i was a kid and uh, i would always choose a female character you know like to play and it was like the only realm that i could be a hot female was like in that little screen um and I remember, like, I was so into it that I would even, like, I think at some point I will also want to develop a video game, like, as, a, as, an, as an art form. Um, because I love this, you know, like, you have some control of it, you have, like, but you have superpowers, you know, and you have this avatar that is actually you in that moment, like, you live with it, you die with it, like, you're, you get frustrated. Um, and then with VR, it's possible to actually embody these avatars you know, to, and, and to be in the fantasy world. Uh, this is the closest that, you know, I can get to actually being a video game character. 
so of course I will want to to do something with it. And specifically for photophobia, my main motivation was to create a, an experience as immersive as possible for people to explore the mangrove, you know, and also the world as I see it somehow and also the world as I hope for it to be.